Welcome everybody, today we're getting started with Sweet Transit. This is a brand new transport tycoon simulation by Factorio's 3D modeler artist. Hence, all of the graphical similarity you probably noticed to Factorio uh, right away just as much as I did. It's a really beautiful looking game that just kind of channels this whole retro aesthetic that uh, is very dear to me. Anyway, I want to cover the basics in this video, long form, and I've opted to forego the normal Twitch stream in favor of hopefully just playing this one on my own, because it includes a lot of really technical systems and granular control of train signals and supply and resource flow, and it, it just requires a lot of focus and concentration. Very easy to get lost in the weeds though, so I wanted to explain everything from the very beginning with what I learned in making this one successful resource loop you see here. Um, and all the mistakes I made, because it's pretty easy to make them. Uh, big thanks once again to Team17 for providing me with a key to this. Uh, so without any further ado, onto the, uh, onto the trains. So I wanted to start off with a decent beginner map, and I've generated this world, the seed of which is up here. Though I've also lowered the amount of water in the world, just so that we would have a nice, kind of, landy area here in the middle, without too many mountains around so that we can store our warehouse, because you'll see that at the beginning that there's a few things that we need space for, much like in Factorio. So I'm gonna go ahead and generate this world, uh, and just give that a second, and it will load in from this beautiful blur. Again, not unlike Fact- but it's giving me a lot of those Factorio vibes that I like. So anyway, we have our world here. Anyway, it looks like we have two major resources on this map. We have some clay out here, and we have some coal in here, along with all the wood and forests, and the mountains actually are resources unto themselves as well, although they just kind of look like impassable blockers. Uh, we're gonna start off with just the goals over here. This game does a very good job at kind of holding your hands, just if you keep looking at the uh, upper left of the screen. So, build a warehouses first, so we're just gonna hit B, and we're gonna get a tip menu. Um, so this is gonna be our warehouse zone, and we can't really do much other stuff in this area, but I just want an area that doesn't have, like, anything in it, so no mountains. Ideally, we would have no forests, no plains, just nothing, but I think I'm gonna go, how about right here? Would that be good? Well, we're going to need to put a settlement near water, and we're going to need coal as a resource, too, so we could probably get a decent loop going to and from our warehouse if we do that, and still leave some space left over. So I think that this is a decent spot. Let's begin there. Good. So now we've got our warehouse. Uh, so now we need a village hall. The village hall is going to be the site of our town where people will move in. And the only real requirement for that is uh, that it be near water, because we're going to need to do some fishing near it. And we also want to keep that out of the range of our warehouse, because the warehouse does... Well, it does warehouse things. Warehouse things that you wouldn't understand, so let's go ahead and put this over here. We'll put the village hall I'd say like nice and right about There because we need space for it to be in range of other things um, We don't need it to be right up to the lake Is what I'm trying to say anyway, so we've got the village hall. Let's go rename this something like what's a um Let's go for Chicago again. I, I like Chicago. It, r it reminds me of... I went on a trip to Chicago a couple of years ago, and there were these beautiful old train yards. Anyway, um... Hmm, reach a population of laborers of 20. So we're gonna go ahead and click on Chicago, and now we should be able to go back into this menu. And we should be able to build these good... So I'm gonna do groups of about six. I've found that you need to kind of granularly space these things out. And I've seen... People place these in, like, more optimized ways, but I kind of like the look of an old town. Like, everything's kind of messed up. But you could kind of pro-gamer move this entire setup in the same way that you do Factorio. And, you know, I think that part of the joy of this game is in, like, being bad at it before you... <laughs> Before you get to the part where you're doing everything in such an optimized way, so I'm kind of enjoying that. This is totally optional, this is fine, but unfortunately the water towers don't have very good range here, so I'm gonna go ahead and put... I think we should be able to quench the thirst of this town with only two of these. And that's good, so we've got the range in the blue, you see the blue line moving around? So that's the range of the water tower, and as long as one of them is abutting each house, we should be fine. There we go, we've got water to the whole town. Now let's go ahead and put in uh, a dock. 
And we're going to put in a small storage here. Now we're going to have a lot of fisheries here along the water, so I think I'm going to leave this somewhere like maybe here, because we want to be able to get roads around as well. We'll kind of build out a road to that. And one over there. And now laborers can move into this village. Chicago, already we're up to 90 people, and there come the people walking around and living their lives. You've got people carrying... Now, this was kind of an area of concern for me because I really like it when you can see down at such a granular level what's going on in the town. And they do actually go about some of their activities. You know, you do just sort of get general people here. But these guys are carrying fish over to the storage, so things are going into the right places, and that feels nice. Anyway, um... Brief tangent there, but uh, here we have Chicago, we have the warehouse, and then we're going to go ahead and build a coal mine. So let's go ahead and uh, open that up again with B. We should be able to do... Uh, no, this is no longer our town building menu, so now we're at the coal and resource management building menu. So I just want to zoom out one more time to make sure that this is going to be the best spot. Yeah, I think that's going to work. So. Eventually, we'll go over to more coal nodes, but for right now, I think we'll just get started off with a basic loop, and one or two of these things should be more than enough. So we're going to go ahead and build our, our actual mine itself, and then the expansions on here. This is named Coal Storage. This is for, I believe, like the resource collection itself, but then there are other places where you store it to load it onto trains. Now, the next part gets a little bit confusing. Before we build any trains, you might be asking, we've built this town and this warehouse, but where are the trains? This game is about trains. Um, well, good question. So, uh, uh there are no trains. No, of course, I'm kidding. So we're going to go ahead and build a distribution center. We could link an actual train station up to a single coal, uh, coal node, but that would be, like, a, a bit much. We could put this distribution center here, and then, fortunately, we get to collect the coal from both mines. So we're going to do that instead, because then it just leaves, like, one nice place where we collect everything. So we're going to go ahead and link up this uh, distribution center to the road. And eventually, I think we'll end up doing that other... You know, I mean, we could do it right now, but... Like, for the future? You know what I mean? But nah. That's fine. Anyway, so we've got our distribution center, and now, on top of all of that, this took me a little while to figure this out, the way that the resource distribution works in this. Uh, now we have to go back into our logistics screen, and then build a small station beside the distribution center. So to go over all that one more time, it goes... Well, before I build platforms or anything. Coal mine, road, distribution center, train station. And I do believe that these need to be adjacent to each other, at least right now, um, or the way that I've done it. And here we go. We're going to go ahead and build out platforms here. And we do want really long platforms along this. Because, um... Well, that means that we can deliver more goods on our trains. The, the length is intentional, and if things are off the platform, God forbid, then that would be awful. So we're going to go ahead and build two of these across lengthways. It seems that almost everybody else that I've seen do this too does a similar setup like this, so I... I think that this is working. Anyway, we're gonna put in the two platforms, a little bridge, so that people can get to both sides. And then we're gonna build some coal storage over here so that trains can actually refuel at this station. Whenever they get the opportunity to get coal, they'll do it, uh, which is quite nice. Um, here we are. We're, so we're gonna build a train depot next, but I want to get done with this station first. So we're going to go ahead and build two tracks here. And I think we'll just do a one-way loop, because that's kept things simple for me, and it's prevented things from, like, colliding. And I don't really want to deal with that, but eventually we will expand to that at some later time in the future. It's, it's easy enough to manage things going one way, and just kind of account for one train going slower than another. Uh, but we will have to get, like, multiply layered stations like this, where we have one bridge leading into another and another. Um, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. <laughs> Pun intended. Anyway, um... Uh, after, the, after the puns. Alright, so now we're gonna go ahead and build a train depot. So I'm gonna head in over to this place. And this is actually a directional building. It's a little confusing because you can build it the wrong way at first. And I just want to think about where do I want this thing. 
So we want to keep a tight loop because that's going to change the speed of everything we're doing. We could build it right in the middle. The last time I kind of built it off to the side, but I might need space for other things right in the middle in the future. And once things get out of the train depot, then they're pretty much good to go. So I think... Hmm... You know, I think right here... Oh, I have an idea. So if I get a train right out onto the tracks, I would like it to refuel. Usually it can do that at the coal mine. So let's build our train depot like way off over here so that it can just kind of snake in. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this right about here. And now, you see that this costs 100 brick and we've got only 100 brick. Uh, so we need to be very careful with this. And I wanna make this as long as possible so that I can get the longest possible trains out of here. So the next task that we're tasked with, well, is to produce 200 coal. So what we're going to need to do here, I'm just going to pause briefly, is we're going to need to take workers out of Chicago, get them on the train, going to the coal mine, and we'll have to drop it off at the warehouse as well because we want to stockpile this stuff, uh, and then bring them back to Chicago because in this game you do need to get your workers home. They can't just stay at work forever like they can in other games. You thought that that was allowed. No, not this time. Anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and just extend out this station here. So let's go like this. Mm, I think that. And we could start to plan on future stuff. Like, what I'm talking about is potentially having more tracks out here at some later date. So I'm just gonna build one of these because I can get a full refund. What I would end up doing would be something like this. And if I get to another platform... Well, I would do another platform over here and then another bridge. So I'm thinking about how can I eventually prepare for... ...staggering this with multiple trains. You see what I mean? I'm gonna go ahead and delete those for now, but I just kind of wanted to show off that pattern. Uh, destroy. I should get back my wealth, I believe. So 190... Yep, I got back all my money. But let's just go ahead with something simple for now. And we'll we'll, uh, we'll connect our train depot to this. Uh, I think we'll have it come in like right around here. Just come out straight. Kind of simple. There we go. Uh, eventually we will connect up our warehouse with a similar station. So I'm thinking that... Do we actually need the distribution center on the where? I don't believe we need it on the warehouse. So let's go ahead and just put the train station there. I'm gonna build a few train stations now. So let's just build these similarly to the last ones. We'll go like this. And I do believe that we have this intentional range here. I'm not sure if we can go out past that range, but that's long enough for me. Um, here we go. So let's go ahead and connect those two. Got some more coal storage. Now this would be good for refueling, but we might not need quite this much along our route. We'll cross that bridge later when we come to it. God, that pun keeps coming back up. So here we go. We'll go ahead and build some tracks here. Let's just do something very similar to what we did before. Eventually, we'll link this all up with signals and whatnot, but... I mean, this is good enough for right now. And good enough is what we're aiming at. There we go. Um... Oops, uh, I guess I should have just done this. Now, that did look directional when I put it in, but these tracks could be... You know, traversed upon either way. So, don't worry about what we're doing right now. Okay. Looks good enough to me. Now, we do want to keep this a nice straight line, but we also want to accommodate for what might come in the future. So, I'm trying to leave some space, you know. Um, what, I'm, what I guess I'm trying to say here is that it's one of those games that's like Factorio in that you can kind of get paralyzed with analysis paralysis because you don't... Because you're hesitant to construct things because of the feet. Whoops, a daisy. I didn't mean to do that. There we go. This should be town stuff. Only town stuff goes here. Now, you can get some analysis paralysis, but I found that by keeping things simple at first, that's just helped me to avoid the kind of brain drain that I would normally get. So, build out a couple more platforms here. And my god, who would want this many platforms? Okay. There we go. Uh, we'll need another bridge because obviously no one can get to this bridge over here. I don't believe it makes a difference where the bridge happens. 
or if that affects the efficiency at all. We will put some more coal storage here as well because it would be nice if they could refuel in Chicago. Um, lots of fuel in Chicago. Let's go ahead and put out one of these things. Uh, what are these again? Tracks. I find that happens when I play like any type of simulation games like that is that I just start to you know like the internal voice just says more of these things more of those things and I, I should really call them by their more specific names but I haven't done a long-form video like this in a while but it feels it feels right anyway so we've got this linked up to Chicago we're gonna go link back up our tracks to there and I believe that's a pretty efficient line unfortunately we had all of this crap here which is just water uh, and is unfortunately impassable so now we're gonna go ahead and actually create a train yes it took us this long to get there this screen is a little confusing but just watch what I'm doing closely so there's a lot of things that can be changed you have all kinds of train presets and this confused the heck out of me when I first started so we're going to just call this um, our first train, so we'll call this the People's Train. There we go. This is going to be the People's Train, and we'll put, uh, we'll put our locomotive, the ST-10, then we'll have a coal tender car so that it can carry more coal on it. This was lost to me and my trains kept running out of coal, because the lo uh, the locomotive... I guess the locomotive is the front car. I'm gonna learn a lot about trains as I go along here, but, um... This can hold only a little bit of coal to burn, but this one holds more, so that should be enough for us. We're not going on a really long trip. We're going to put in, like, as many passenger cars as we can. And now we've actually gone over the link, so we could just keep doing this like we're a crazy person, but we're not going to do that, because obviously we don't have enough room in our train depot. Remember how I said that the depth matters? We've got enough for 200 people, 40... 80, 120, 160, 200 people, plus a little bit more for coal. Uh, and this is just going to be purely a passenger train. So we're going to go ahead and build that. Uh, and we're going to deploy that. Now we do need to create a route for this. So we're going to call this, um... You know, let's just call it... Pr whoops, uh, my keyboard spasmed. I don't know what happened there. We'll call it proletariat again, why not? I think that's pretty clear that it's bringing the workers to work. So that's going to go to Chicago, uh, and then it needs to swap workers, so this means it'll load and unload the people who are going to work and the people who are um, tired and need to go home. And then this will go to the coal mine, and these will be the only two stops, so we're just going to load and offload workers, but this train is going to go to every other work stop. I know that's not really perfectly efficient in the future, but it's a matter of separating out everything. It's good enough for me, really. So this is proletariat, and we're going to have that go there. There we go. Um, now we still need to deploy the train. And when we start to try to upgrade and get more trains, it gets a little crazy, so... Here we go. We've got the train. We've got the train. We can follow the train by clicking on it again. Uh, and we can see the contents of each car if we uh, go over them. So we have no workers in the train right now. It's empty, so we just see nothing. But there's a good amount of detail and explanation in this game and that you can hover over things. And I just realized that I totally forgot to add signals to my entire network. Will this actually stop in those places even without signals? I'm kind of curious. Okay, it does stop if it's just on its own. Of course, uh, if we add in any more trains, this is going to be a disaster because the trains will just say... Well, the trains won't say anything. They're trains, but, you know. We're going to go ahead and just add in a bunch of signals here, so I'm... Just using one of the built-in tools to kind of space them out. You just click and drag. Uh, and we want to allow trains to kind of come in on separate platforms here. This is just so that one train can be parked in there. And if one train is going slow, another train can kind of pass it by. You know, not to be rude to the other train, but just because people have places to go. So we're going to go ahead and separate these out into other stuff segments and if if there's someone on the train or if there's someone on the track of course there's nobody on the tracks that would be a really interesting dlc though like train robbers <laughs> i have some ideas for combat in this game as in many other games anyway this is a very long segment so i think i want to separate this out as well let's put one like right there and you can kind of see i can drag these as 
close together or as far apart as I want. So I think I want them about that far apart, so I'll do that. Here we go, back into Chicago, and boom. There we go, we've got our whole route. Let's go back to our train, and we're loading up workers in Chicago. Here comes the proletariat into the train. And you can't actually see the people physically getting in, which I would like to see that, but... You know, maybe someday. Anyway, we've got the full train now. We can see them over here on this menu. Okay, so the train is choo-chooing along. Let's change the time of day to middle of the day now. There we go. So, you have three speeds. And then you have the pause, and these actually do an appreciably good job at getting things moving along. So we've still got, I'm going to pause, we've got no workers here. And now as we come in, choo-chooing, there we go. I want you to pay attention to the fuel, so we're at 71%. Fuel, and let's look at the workers. So we've got 70%, that should be lifted back up as we pull in here, because it'll refuel. And there we go, we're swapping the workers, the workers are getting out. Uh, that might have been too many workers for that coal mine, actually, so we just had people awkwardly get onto the train looking for work and then not get a job. That's embarrassing. So there is a good amount of that that I've had to do in this game where I forget about one little thing and then the entire, uh, the whole shebang of it is kind of lost to me. The whole shebang. There we are. Okay, so, well, we do have enough fuel. Why didn't it refuel at that location? Oh, because we haven't mined any coal yet. So, yeah, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I'm going to go ahead and speed up time. Here we are in Chicago. We should just load on more people because no one's tired here. Yeah, everyone's fully rested, going for multiple loops on the train, just looking for work at the coal mines. It's actually kind of a funny dystopian world they're living in. Let's go ahead and look at the coal area. So now, storage is filling up here. We've got 110 in all of these. And is there any in this place? I guess they're just going straight into the refueling station. So let's look again at our locomotive. 44% fuel here. Now it should refuel. So 43. Yep, there we go. It refueled. And again, the workers are getting off. And as these people start to get tired... So are any of them tired? Average rest, 87%, and that is dropping. Uh, so as they get too super tired, they're going to become less productive, and then they'll have to go home to Chicago. So, that's one basic loop. We've got one train loop up and running, and it only took us 20 minutes. Nice. So, we've got all the coal there, but we're not actually storing the coal. If you've noticed my coal meter, it's just been sort of stagnant right there. We aren't really using it on anything. Uh, but we aren't creating it either, so we're going to go ahead and need to store this in the warehouse. We have a capacity of 300 on this. Uh, so I'm not going to use my main train here. This transports coal like as fuel for itself in this car. But there's a couple of little granular details that were lost on me about this when I started playing this game. So we've got the people's train here. Let's get, um, let's get the coal train. Now I really want to call it the coal train. Okay, I'm going to call it like after John Coltrane. Yeah, let's just call it John Coltrane. That's a good pun. That's a very good pun. So let's go ahead and we'll put another coal tender car in this. I'm not really sure if that's going to be completely necessary, but I don't want it to offload coal and then leave itself without fuel. And what I'm going to go ahead and do here is we have all these other wagons and cars that transport various goods and other crap. But we're going to use the gondola wagon here. Um, you see, we can't build this anymore because I've actually made it too long. I'm going to go ahead and right click to remove this. Uh, lots of nice controls in here, and we could even do- I wanted to just show this because I thought it was exciting and ridiculous. We could just create, like, what the heck is this, and then we could do, like, one of these and one of these, and then maybe flip this one, and I don't even know if this is allowed or possible, but I'm just happy that it's in the game. Anyway, I, there's really, like, a psycho in me that wants to <laughs> do a lot of things that I'm not doing in this game. But, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. So this will be good because we can start to transport coal, and it is costing coal to create these trains. So let's go ahead and build that. John Coal Train. And we're going to give that its own separate route, too. So we're going to create, um... I, I'm going to give these some simple names because I, I do legitimately start to get confused here. This is the Coal Train. Um, or Coal, whoops, route. And... Make this like a darker, like a darker blue. Like, the darkness of the blue that is 
blue coal. I don't know what I'm talking about here. Let's just make it totally black so that we remember that it's coal. Okay, so this one's going to go to uh, coal mine one, and it's going to load up some coal, and then it's going to go to warehouse one. It's going to unload until done. Now, we could add in other wait conditions for time passed and so on and so forth, but I've just kept it as until done for all of these because that makes good sense. All right, so we're going to have this go on the coal route, and we're actually going to name this train because I, I have started to do this. Because you, you will get to a point where you would just have no idea what anything is after a while. Did it deploy the? Tra oh, we never deployed the train, so we'll go ahead and deploy the train. There we go. Good job. Okay, and I'm going to name this. Actually, I, uh, I feel like John Coal Train would be very confusing after a while. Let's just call it Coal Train. There we go. Cold train... Boy. There we go. Cold train... Ah, wait, that's even better. Cold train, like, boys with a Z. There we go. And then what is the other one? Where is my other train? We could always zoom out. There we go. Just to see all the trains. Now, I, I do think that this is good color coding. I know that the black train has the coal. I know that the red <laughs> train is carrying the proletariat on it. Um... Uh, what is this? Train Zero? We'll call this... People Express. I don't know, I just want to name them something fun that I'll- I'll still remember what it is. Actually, boys could be confusing because I believe that there are... Boys on the train, and there are no boys on the train, it's just coal, no people. Aside probably from the engineer. Let's go ahead and see what we're doing. Before I look at the goals themselves, I just like to check and make sure that everything's functioning the way I intend for it to. So we got eight tired boys on this train. We can start to get other people than laborers, but I think everyone is just a laborer to start. So here we go, eight tired boys on that train. And we've got the coal train over here. Now this does have a lot of coal on the train, so great. Let's go make sure that that's actually being dropped off at the warehouse, because Sometimes bizarre stuff happens. So look at this, 128. We've got 128 coal, that's very nice. But we should be getting more of it in. We're unloading at warehouse one, so let's make sure that's happening. And good, they are offloading the coal. Now this does have like a maximum amount. And we are exporting nine. I haven't really kept track of where we're using coal, but yeah. Our, in our whole network, we're using up nine coal everywhere. We don't really have a flow going on with wood and other stuff though. But I want to go ahead and start producing wood. I think we're good with this. We'll go ahead and ex actually let's expand Chicago for a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and build just more homes for our our fantastic proletariat here. Here we go. Good job, everyone. All right, let's go ahead and maybe do this. Uh, actually, we don't have we lack the the required wood for that. We had only ten wood left. So this is a bit scary. We've run low on wood. No one... No one's happy when we're running out of wood. We'll give them some more potable water. There we go. Nice potable water. Uh, I don't know where the water comes from with the water towers. It's just... It's in the tower. It comes there from heaven, I guess. Anyway, we'll go ahead and produce some wood. So we just need, like, forest for this. We may even be able to do this on planes, because we're really just building a sanctuary for this stuff. Now, I'm gonna need to keep this out of the way of the warehouse, but I think I want it just off on some separate area, because I'm gonna keep this central loop nice and tight. Uh, but we could go ahead and put off some other adventure over on another spot. I guess we'll use this normal set of woods, or we could split something off here. Yeah, you know, let's keep our central loop free from bizarre stuff. So we'll kind of make this into a figure eight. Yeah, let's do that. Or even put it nice and close to the warehouse so that it doesn't have to travel all that way. You know, let's do that. So that the wood can just go straight into the warehouse a little bit. Now I'm starting to regret having the coal mine over here because it has to go all the way through Chicago just to get to the warehouse. We might even be able to do something faster like this, for example, and I'm gonna go ahead and just do this because it's crazy and I like it. If we do this... Before I get started with wood... Wouldn't we give the coal train route just a shorter way to go? 
let's find out. Actually, let's observe and see if we need to change the route. I love science. And after all, we can have some of that. I'm just gonna go ahead and check this out myself, and I'll meet up with you again in a minute. Okay, so Coltrane is actually using this route. So, we've given Coltrane a short- excuse me, we've given Coltrane a shorter route to go by, which is actually quite amazing. But Coltrane is working faster now, so I like that. Anyway, let's go ahead and produce some wood. Uh, and we want to go straight from the warehouse to... What is the issue in Chicago here? What is the problem, people? No one who can board the train. Everyone is either working or resting. Too bad. Too bad. We'll worry about Chicago in a minute. Right now I'm worried about the wood. So, we're gonna go ahead and... Well, I mean, we need wood to make more people, because people obviously are, come out of wood. So we want to keep this well away from the town and everything, I suppose, too. I hadn't thought of that. Alright, well, let's split it off from here. Here we go. I think we'll go ahead and put the wood center there. Now we need to create the actual sanctuary. Yes, you saw trees, but how now? Uh, no, the trees weren't actually... cuttable. Here we go, 120 spaces for that, and then we need to create a wood start. So they're actually going to chop those trees. It's just like the coal mine, except now it's with wood. But here we go, um... Let's go ahead and put in, I think, another distribution center. Now, this will be a much more flexible distribution center, so I'm happy about that. Um, anyway, let's put this distribution center somewhere deeper off in the woods, because I think we're going to have more sanctuaries out and about over here. Put that, like, right there. Oh, wait, it, it's gonna cost me 50 wood. I totally forgot about that. That's embarrassing. Okay, so this is one of those ironic situations where we actually are going to have to put the uh, the train station right next to the place where people were walk. Well, eventually we'll set that up with a distribution center of its own. Um, that was quite horrible, but okay. Yeah, I just have to kind of live with my mistake. In fact, actually, let's destroy this and put it one more tile over because I have a better idea. If we put this like right there. Then we can build out our platforms this way. Yeah, that's a little bit more like what I wanted to do. Alright, so I made a mistake, but, you know, I'm still alive, so it's, uh... I can forget- whoa, lots of platforms again. <laughs> that's my favorite trick. Anyway, let's go ahead and put that bridge over to another few of these. And we're gonna link this up to the whole thing now. So I think we'll do like that. Actually, is this gonna give us enough room? Yes, there we go. So then we connect that up there so we have some room in case of someone stopping and getting in the way. Get out of the way of the train. <laughs> there we go. Now this is gonna make sort of an awkward loop back, but it's gonna prevent the whole route from getting elongated, which would be annoying. And let's just create something vast and horrible right here. Like... Yeah, this. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna do that. Just one horrible junction, which doesn't make much sense. Okay, so now we have the sawmill, and I think we'll send the proletariat there after their current journey, right after we put in some more signals, so let's just... Whoops, so I put this signal in the wrong way. Let's go ahead and delete that. We could blueprint some of this stuff, but I feel like I'm just going to cause more trouble than it's worth if I begin blueprinting without really knowing the optimized paths. So I'm just going to live with my kind of normie existence here, creating trains and... and just enjoying them, sort of. So this is one nice segment here, so no one will crash into each other. I haven't had a train crash yet, but I'm really looking forward to it when it happens. Let's go back into our routes and change the proletariat route to... How about... We, so, let's kind of zoom out again, so we get the numbers that show their stops. The proletariat don't need to stop at the warehouse because they have nothing to do there. Uh, so eventually we might end up shortening that on our route, actually. Prevent it from colliding with the other train, and I'm starting to see that we're going to have a collision here. And it'd be nice to get, like, a stone bridge. Um, which is available, but we might want to start to think about those nice 90 degree intersections. Anyway, so it goes one to Chicago, where it picks up people and drops them off. Then it goes to the coal mines, where it drops off the people who work in the coal mines. And then we wanted to go to the sawmill. 
Now we could separate out these two groups of workers, but I think we'll just do it simply like this. And let's go check on the proletariat, make sure they're actually doing their... their tasks. There we go. Here we go, so yes, good. So it is going to the forest, and let's kind of slow it back down. And we should see people start to come in. See, there's one boy, two boys, th and more boys than we can even count chopping down trees. So how many people are in here? Lots of tired people from the coal mine. Good. Good. They're nice and tired. So, and now our next goal was to produce wood, and now we should start to get... Good. These are the things that we're unlocking as we start to get more laborers, more workers, and so on and so forth. Okay, so we've got two trains doing all of our stuff, and eventually we will get more. It could be a little bit more efficient, but I like keeping things simple for now. Is this train stopping here? Now, I don't perfectly understand why that train stops there and it doesn't just go around. Oh, because it's the other one's in the way anyway. All right, so that does make sense. Yeah, I could make these a little bit more efficient, but we'll worry about that later on. Workers eventually get tired and rest, so we already know about this. Apparently some people are not... Are you not resting? No, they seem to be pretty well rested. Average rest 95%, that's very good. Average rest 95... Yeah, tired times here. No one's tired here. Alright, so we've got the wood, but now we need to reach a higher population of laborers. It seems like Chicago... Everyone's either working or resting. My god, a lot of people are getting off of this train. Oh, we actually are starting to see the people get on and off the train, so this is like a volume of traffic flow measurement. Sorry, I got a little carried away there. Um, we haven't produced enough wood yet. Oh, yes, so we aren't actually grabbing wood from this. I totally forgot about this. Not enough workers, but we're dropping off workers now. So it should be okay. Only 13 out of 40. Who is not working? You know, we're, we're going to go ahead and just... Work on the rest of this flow. Let's go ahead and make sure that we're actually picking up the wood. So the wood gets cut into boards there. We don't have to worry about like logging and other stuff like that. It just goes straight into boards. Let's go ahead and we have the John Cole train and we're gonna go uh, create the uh, wood train. I don't really have a good pun here so I think I'm just going to leave that at that. The people's train gone uh, John, John Cole train Good. Let's go ahead and give this another ST10. We'll give it another coal tender. And then we want to give it a flat wagon, because I think this one's just going to transport only boards. Let's go ahead and remove that. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. This should be plenty of space for boards. This can hold, I believe it's up to, is that 250? I think this is naming all three of these goods. It's going to cost some coal to create. We have the coal in storage. Let's go ahead and build that. Now that's the preset name, and then we have to go ahead and name the the train itself again. Um, so we have the coal route, the proletariat route. Let's go ahead and create the wood route. Wood route. And what color should we make that? Let's go ahead and make that like a nice shade of brown for the wood. We'll desaturate it. Whoopsie daisy, whoopsie daisy. We'll go ahead and darken it a bit. Actually, that's kind of more of an orange. Here we go, we're like a burnt umber sort of deal going on. Burnt umber, that's your favorite color. All right, here we go. We'll go from, well, where do we need to go? We need to go to the sawmill. And then we need to go to, yeah, we load there. And then we go over to warehouse one and we unload. And I believe that's actually it. We've kept these routes fairly simple and nice for ourselves. We'll go wood route and deploy that. There it goes! There it goes. Let's make sure that it's doing all the things that it's supposed to do. Oh, and it does actually show the whole color-coded route. Not only just the numbers. I just noticed that. Okay, so these have been loaded up, and there they go. They do visually change. Okay, nice. And so we don't seem to be getting that issue with the people working here anymore. What is the issue in these co Oh, we don't have enough people. Maybe I'm going to need to do another... Ah, uh, you know what I think it is? Is that too many people are getting onto the train looking for... It could be that. It could very well be that. Anyway, a little something I'll need to work out, but it's not really destroying our entire supply line. Anyway, let's work on the wood because it's not like the people are going to get up and riot or anything. <laughs> no, that would be a shame if that happened. 
Okay, so we are offloading wood here. Now we've got upkeep. I really don't understand how we've been paying this 31 upkeep the whole time, but let's just make sure that... I mean, it does take a fairly long time for them to load and offload that. And we've got these, like, kind of longer cyclical, well, cycles that are taking place. Let's just make sure that we're kind of breaking even with the amount of wood we're using. Okay, that's pretty good. We'll wait for two or three flows of wood to come in. You know, a nice wood flow. It tells me that production is too low, but it really doesn't seem like that. This message is a little weird. Because it seems like we're now hitting the ceiling of wood. Which is bizarre and crazy. Anyway, I've been trying to get this wood. Because I want to go back to my civilization of Chicago. Yeah, not really much of a civilization. But I want to build more houses for laborers, I want to build more fisheries, and I haven't been able to do that without wood. Remember that was the whole reason we did this in the first place? Let's go ahead and put more of this crap down. There we go. Um, buildings need- I already know about roads. I've already gotten to like the ninth level game. Here we go. Um, let's go ahead and put down another water tower here, but I guess we'll try to... No, we want to keep this stuff in range of the train station, because if we start to get too far from the train station, then people will be very upset. Uh, and I think that's going to work for us. This gives us a nice long range on the water tower. Now, they can get to the station from pretty far away, but I've noticed that if you start to make a town too big, uh, you'll run into issues. I really don't need this many roads. We could just do, like, strips. I just don't think it looks very visually pleasing, to be honest, so I've refrained from doing that. Now more people should stream into Chicago, and there we go. We hit our population goal, so now we should be able to build... Well, there's markets. I'll probably build another fishery if I can help it, too. That'd be nice. I mean, eventually we'll need to do this anyway. Now the fisheries are going to need to go to the storage, so we can connect up to five things there. I don't think we're gonna run into any issues if we just put these right next to each other. Let's put a- let's put all five on it! Just decimate the local population of fish. I don't believe you actually can decimate the local population of fish. But yeah, there we go. Five out of five. And it says that there aren't enough people working, but people are obviously just g having job interviews. There we go. Nice job interview to carry around the fish. So how many fish have you carried before? Uh, very fascinating interview question. My god, look at all of the- they're going to kill all of the fish from this small lake. How could there be this many fish? It must have great depth. Anyway, um, <laughs> potato fields. So this is where I should get into a little bit of the resources. So they're producing a nice fishy amount of fish. Um, the production is greater than the consumption, so that's fine. The favorite food among the inhabitants of fish are caught at the fishing docks. I suppose that this makes the town, like, more... happy? I don't know, I'm real. I'm not really 100% sure of all of the effects, but it does seem to do some good for the people there. Consumption? Where do they consume? Let's go ahead and put in a market. Maybe we could learn more about it if we put in a market. Let's go ahead and click on Chicago again, and are we... Here we go, a market. A service building that provides inhabitants with a place to gather and trade most village operate... <laughs> Uh, upkeep, uh, okay, so this does cost wood, but we're creating a goodly amount of wood. Um, inhabitants plus 1800. Now, does this allow them to just have more inhabitants just for having one? Uses up 20 workforce as well, so we have a lot of people milling about, and obviously we want to not have that. Now, this won't reach all of the inhabitations. Um, and I don't honestly believe... Does this thing just need to touch the storage or the actual production facilities? I'm not 100% sure. Let's go ahead. Excuse me. Let's go ahead and have this right about here. Because I think that will fit snug as a bug in a rug over there. Oh, and I was wrong, actually. It doesn't. Ah, uh, that's too bad. Can we build a road here to just barely get these things to market? Yes, we can. Okay, so it's problem solved. But on the outskirts over here, they don't access the market. I'm not really just going to build a whole other market for these sickos who live in here. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so these people have more trading options. So what is our town's total capacity now? So the town's earlier capacity was 1,200 if you looked at it, but now it seems to be 3,000, which is a crazy hike. I'm not really perfectly sure why people don't all move in up to capacity, but it, I always seem to, I never get stopped, but I have to keep going. 
Anyway, that was a lot of Chicago work. Let's get away from Chicago for a bit, although these two people don't have amazing fish in their lives. Screw them. Screw them. I'm thinking that the next ideal resource to go after would be, obviously, potatoes. So, where do we grow potatoes where we don't want anything else? Of course. I think that this giant field of dirt looks like the ideal area for potato growth. And I think we're going to shoot off some other... Why is no one working again? Oh yeah, because we're already up to capacity. Yeah. We either need to use up wood faster or just be less lazy. See here, we aren't perfectly at the storage, but... You know, they're starting to max out on these things and it's just no work for anyone. So we'll need to create more storages. And we have to wait some time before we can up our warehouse storage, too, so... Anyway, let's go ahead and build a potato field, because that's gonna unlock a box wagon, which will allow us to transport the potatoes. And, actually, before I get going, let me just get a couple more houses in Chicago. I know I said I had forsaken Chicago and I was leaving it behind, but I... I take it back. Chicago, I have not forsaken you. There we go. Let's build another water tower there. Another one of these. Good. I think people will start to work in there. Good. And let's get one of these things. Good. That water is coming in from the tower. And let's just see the population really fast. So it is going up. We aren't running into any real growth issues at all. Um, that's good to see. Let's get up to 800 just so we can unlock these other things. Because I do want to start to get to the quarry here. Yeah, we just need to build a couple more houses in here. Uh, this is on resource flow. I think I've already explained that. So let's go ahead and do this. Six more houses. We'll do another five here, because I did kind of do that weird with the water tower, but... Water towers are of an awkward size, and I haven't figured out a structure that I enjoy. So that's good. We're already up to 800, so we've already hit this goal, and now we've unlocked some other garbage. Let's go ahead and... Um, I think at this point, we'll just do the potato farms. So now we have... I was going to say that we had wood, but we don't have wood again. Um, why don't we have wood? Are people not working on wood? Hang on a second, let's go look at this flow really quick before I do anything else. So this train is carrying as much wood as it possibly can. Well, almost as much wood as it possibly can. Alright, I see what I'm going to need to do here. I'm not perfectly happy about this. We're going to need to wait until more wood gets dropped off and then like use that fleeting opportunity to build a distribution center and just get one more forestation place going. Because apparently, uh, since we've built so much more in Chicago, they've been using more wood to upkeep it, so this is starting to make a little more sense to me. Okay, we're waiting for coal train to go by. So now we have three trains, so we are starting to get some train traffic. Let's go ahead. So now we've got a temporary replenishment of wood and we're just going to sort of need to put this in there while there's a fleeting opportunity. Uh, let's go ahead and just change all this into a distribution center. So I'm keeping one space open there. And we'll go ahead and do... Are we still touching this? Yeah, that should work. And let's just make a nice thin road right here. Now we want to fit in as many other lumber mills as we can in this area, and we'll try to get their trees, their nurseries, out to the sides. So I think we'll do another sawmill, like, here? Yeah, I think as long as it's touching it, it should be fine. So put it, like, there. Good. I'll put the actual nursery itself. Good, so now we've kind of extended out to the, the vast beyond that we're able to. Mm, I think we'll do that. So we want to get a total of 120 of these things. 115. 120, exactly. There we go. And then we'll put in the storage. Can we just put it way off to the side here? Honestly, let's test it out. If we can do that, that would be great, because I just want to get this stuff out of the way. Uh, we need two for right now. They'll drop off more workers. And then that should totally fill up the train. Now we could get more frequent deliveries or something like that. Let's just give this another quick runabout, though. After we drop off more workers, then we'll see if they're starting to get more wood. The one thing I haven't really checked is, like, if we have the workers in the first place, but Chicago's been pretty good at producing people. 
So it doesn't seem like we're actually getting more workers in this one. Is this thing connected to the distribution center? What I might end up needing to do is totally rebuild this thing. Yeah, let's go ahead and just try rebuilding this, because it might be connected to the station right now. Um... Load or offload, I think we're good there. Let's go ahead and just change this to... Well, it's still that station. I just messed up when I was doing the distribution network here. Oh no, I've deleted the whole thing. Let's go ahead and just redo all that and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I've fixed this whole thing and now we do have workers in both areas. What I did wrong before was, I believe this, I think that my train station was linked to one of the actual wood or sawmills themselves, which I wanted it to be linked to the distribution center because remember before when we did with the coal mines, coal mines lead to distribution center and then the distribution center leads into the station. What I had done with the lumber was to, because I hadn't any wood at the time, I linked one of the sawmills directly to the station so I had to go fix the whole thing and anyway, it seems to be fixed now, it seems to be working because workers are going to both places and we have boys working in both forests so I think that that's fine. Anyway, um, there's a lot of checks and balances like that throughout this game, as you can see. But I think we're just gonna go on with potato life now, because that's what I've been- Well, that's what we've been anticipating since the beginning, so let's go ahead and do, um... Hmm... How do we begin life with potatoes? I suppose let's start with the distribution center this time. So unfortunately, the dirt has been claimed by Chicago, so... Let's go ahead and put a new distribution center, like... Maybe over here. I think we'll go up and around, maybe through this narrow pass to get back around. So let's go, like, right there-ish. That way there'll be plenty of room for the station. Actually, I think I want this a little bit further out. I'm gonna go right about here. That way we have plenty of room for the station platform. And we'll worry about the paths later, but let's get the train station and the platform in first. Now, the game does sort of, like, summon up a new building menu every couple seconds here. But you just need to click on the main building in the loop in order to get it to the menu that you want it at. So I think that gives them enough room to turn here. If I make the platforms longer, I might run into some issues here, but I... I wonder if I can do bridges later on. Well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it again, pun intended. Um... Hmm... Here we go. Double train platform. And now the potato fields are really one of my favorite things because they just... I get the sense that, like, civilization is beginning, you know? Like, when there are potatoes, maybe it's like a... maybe it's an Irish thing, I don't know. Oh, we gotta click on the distribution center to get the road going. Let's build roads out nice and far, nice and far. And then let's have maybe, like, some potato happenings when people come into the village. So we'll have a nice kind of T intersection here. And then as you get further out into the fields, we want to make sure that we can connect a lot of potato plots to this. Let's just kind of build them on the extremities. Here's a potato farm over here. And you get a potato farm. There we go. Feed workers transports them to a village. So this one's going to need to stop at Chicago. It won't go back to the warehouse. It's a little funny like that. So we'll do this one like out here-ish, I believe. Good, that gets us perfectly to 120. And just like that, it's a potato field. Isn't that nice? There we go. Uh, eight of those. So obviously this is just a potato field out in the middle of nowhere. Like, grow me, you know? I desire that I be grown. No, potatoes don't have sentience, nor do they talk. All right, so I don't really want to have this interfere with the sawmill. I just want it to be kind of its own loop. So let's have this go out here. This is turning into a massive intersection, probably somewhere that we're going to need to create, like, something more logistically accommodative for it. Yeah. Let's go like this, and then we'll just do a straight turn. A straight turn. Wow, no one's ever said that before. Brilliant. Okay. How quickly can we link this up? And then if we can do that, and that's great. Unfortunately, this does look kind of awkward, but that's the best I can do. Let's go back and delete these again. We will get a full refund. 
So can we just delete? Yep, it's smart and we can delete that part. Well, let's go ahead and do this again and then we link these two up. Yeah, it can't really make sense when I when I speak about these things. Link up the train... I don't know train words. It doesn't really command the same, like, corpus of vocabulary as, say, for example, nautical endeavors. You know, like, uh, port side of the ship or the aft, you know, or the angle of yaw on the ship or something like that. There's all these... There's all this terminology in nautical life. I suppose there must be some in train life. I'll probably get a lesson in it when I read the comments for this video. Anyway, um... I've learned so many words that I've just pronounced wrong ever since I started... ...creating YouTube videos, and it's always like a humbling moment. And I used to think, why are people correcting me on that? But it's actually helped me a lot, because I, I speak better now. But some people know some very obscure things about word. Anyway, here we go. Um, okay, so we don't have a route to this yet. We need to get the proletariat coming here. And then obviously we're going to need some potato transportation. So let's go ahead and give the proletariat... We might need another proletariat train because I'm starting to see that these things are filling up with people. Um, let's keep the same route. But we could start to specialize our workers. See, so we've got 40 out of 40 and 32 of them are... If we're getting, like, a full train of tired people... Can you just imagine how much damage that would do to the population of Chicago when a whole train of... Look, all these people are tired! Wait a minute, these actually must be the granular workers, because if we're starting to see more traffic here... Okay, this is improving my estimate... my rating of this game. Which was already very high. Um... Okay, let's go ahead and send the people there. Wood route. Let's go ahead and create... Uh, no, we don't really need a new route. Well, we will need a new route. Let's do potato. Man, I don't know why that happens. Every time I start typing something, I just get a million Ps. There we go. Potato. Root. Uh, and we'll make this like a nice kind of yellow for like a golden potato, you know? Maybe we'll lower the value and the saturation to a just slightly more tasteful golden brown. There we go, that's like a nice potato shade. Alright, so this is gonna stop at Chicago, where it should actually refuel, I believe. Let me double check on Chicago in a moment. Um, we don't really want to swap workers at Chicago, though. We want to unload the potatoes, and we want to go to... We have warehouse one. This is called Station One. I don't know why we didn't rename that. Let's go rename that Potato Taberg. There we go. Potato Berg. Yeah. That's good. Okay, so this is going to be the potato route, but we aren't haven't created this train yet. Let's go back to Proletariat. So the Proletariat route goes from Chicago to the coal mine to the sawmill, and then we also wanted to stop at Potato Town. Okay, so let's go over to Potato Town, but this route is starting to get very, very long. We might need to just make another train that does exactly the same thing. That will also swap workers. Um, so let's first off just go ahead and make sure that this train is actually doing that, because it should update right now. Okay, there we go, and it goes off to Potato Town. Good, people go off to Potato Town, and let's make sure they're working in the fields. Good. There they go, miserably producing potato. Alright, so now it goes back, but let's see how many people are in these cars. We've got so many tired people on these cars now, we... have probably end up doing that again. But it does fully load up to 40, and how many does it drop off at each worksite? Here we go, we've loaded it up with 16 people, 32 people, and we should get tired potato farmers. Yeah, so now we are starting to hit the max capacity of this train. Um, so we'll probably do another one of those. But it's working out well enough. So let's go ahead and make our second train that loads and offloads potatoes. Uh, we got our wood train. We got so many presets now, but that's the reason why we got to stay organized. Let's go ahead and create another one. And this is the potato. Uh, potato. Tra uh, train, yeah. I just want to keep these things simple because it can start to get kind of confusing. So now we can't use the gondola wagon because that would open up the potato to the elements. Um, 
I think we need to use the box wagon here, which we just unlocked, mind you. Now this can transport all kinds of things, but let's go ahead and just do normal potato. Excuse me, normal potato building. I started trembling with my anticipation for the potatoes. Let's take this on the potato route and then go ahead and deploy this. And this was our nice kind of yellowish golden spud train. Oh, we could have called it like the Spud Express or something. Well, we could still do that. We could still do that, mind you. Now, I don't like that the potatoes aren't actually being visually shown on the boxcars, because if the windows filled up like they were just exploding with spud, that would be informative. But I don't know, maybe, maybe someday. I'm going to call this Spud Express. Because I, I think I'll remember that. Trains need to fuel more efficiently. Okay, so now we've run into an issue, and this is actually a very productive mistake, a learning moment. So this train has run out of fuel, which means it's going significantly slower than the other trains, and this is going to hold things up. So I've made an accident here, and this train has nowhere along its route where it's being refueled. Fortunately, trains don't just completely stop without fuel, because then the game would pretty much come to a halt. I don't know, there would be like train towing and other mechanics. I don't know, maybe that's planned, but yeah, I'm kind of thankful that it's just not such a horrible mistake right now. Let's go ahead and double check in Chicago. Chicago? Does Chicago have coal? So one thing that I'm probably forgetting along my roots is this. I haven't been dropping off any coal at Chicago. Um... And if the potatoes are stopping at Chicago just to drop off the potatoes, again, we can't st store those potatoes in the warehouse, we just drop them off at Chicago. I mean, sh look, Chicago has... Oh, Chicago's even totally run out of potatoes. Yeah, because they're just consuming so many potatoes, these people. Um, well, what we need to do is make sure that our coal train is dropping off some coal at Chicago. So let's go ahead back over there. And we're going to go back over to our route. This is the coal route. And we actually want to drop off some there. So we're going to need to elongate this route. It goes to the coal mine. Then it goes to... Ah, we're actually going to need to undo this portion. Yeah, so we're going to need to stop at Chicago again, so... You know, there is value in just having one loop that hits everything. Um, in Chicago, we're going to unload. Um, how much will it unload? Enough. I mean, we're already pretty much overproducing coal to begin with, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, look at how much coal we have. We just have coal out the wazoo. Let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to go back and check on our coal train here. Make sure that that's updated. Stops at the coal mine. Good, there we go. So now it goes into... It's waiting at Chicago. Still waiting at Chicago. And there it goes. Have I set these signals up right? Are these the other way? I may have made that mistake, actually. Let me just double check there. It does appear as if I've done everything pretty much right here. Mmm... There might be more to this. Anyway, let's make sure that it's dropping off coal at Chicago. Chicago is, yep, Chicago is full of coal now, but it hasn't totally dropped off coal, right? No, it has, but that was only because Chicago was completely empty of coal. I just want to make sure that my production chains are, like, somewhat full. You know, it's better to have a surplus than to have not enough. Okay, so good. So the coal train is still overflowing with coal. Everything else is fueling nice and efficiently. And let's go back to our Spud Express and just make sure that this thing actually refuels at Chicago. So it's unloading at Chicago, and as it unloaded, it went from 0 to 100%. So even though we didn't directly tell it to, like, refuel, there's no button for that, it seems to me that if it's doing something else, then it will refuel anyway. Let's go back over to this car and make sure that it's actually dropping off Spuds at Chicago. And good, Chicago is getting a nice, healthy amount of spud. So now with the Spud Express pretty much moving at full speed, let's make sure that Chicago is getting all of the spud that it needs. So Chicago is running dangerously low on potatoes right in time for the Spud Express to arrive back in. So I don't know if it's like perfect flow yet, but we're getting there. Another thing I'm starting to see is we could cut out some steps in this. So instead of having the Spud Express go all the way through this warehouse, which it doesn't need to, we could pretty much just have it loop right back around here. Um, 
And now this is where things are probably going to get more bizarre because I didn't really do this in my first playthrough. But I kind of now desire to make things more efficient. It's kind of like playing Factorio. And this is where I'm going with this whole review of this, whatever it is, a review, let's just call it a, a look at the game. Um, ultimately, I am kind of want to get 90 degree angles here so that I don't have to interfere with these other routes, but let's just do this right now for the sake of argument. Here we go, we'll just cross through this, and then go over this away. And I know that this looks horrible, but, I mean, this is starting to look like trains the game, you know what I mean? Like, this is good. Stuff is happening with these trains now. Alright, we've got, um... Where am I going? Here we go. We've got some signals, though. This should just be the Spud Express. And then let's go check on the Spud Express. Where is the Spud Express at this moment? There it is. Okay, let's follow it, see what it does. It should take my slightly more efficient route, unless if, of course, I've made any major mistakes. Oh, what the heck is going on? We seem to have reached an impasse. Ah, I accidentally put a signal going in the wrong way. All right, let me delete that and see. I may have just completely destroyed- nope, there we go. Everything is fine. <laughs> Alright, good, so the Spot Express is moving slightly more- on a slightly shorter route where it hopefully won't interrupt the other trains, but it could always happen. Anyway, we'll try to look more at train flow as we go, but things are chugging along. My god, there's so many opportunities for puns in this. But yeah, it is it is chugging along. Anyway, now we're gonna go ahead and create a quarry, because uh, we've got to produce more wood per minute, and this is gonna give us more capacity, more wealth, and so on and so forth. Because we seem to be maxing out at 300k wealth here. How does that work? Well, whatever. Whatever. But we are actually getting quite dangerously low on our wood. We may need to start producing more wood as well. But now this is getting more Factorian. We're looking at the flows of goods and so on and so forth, but I really desperately want this stone bridge. So we're gonna do a quarry next. So before I get started on the quarry, actually, I just wanted to zoom out and show you the entire network, how it's looking. Uh, it, it's nice that you can zoom out and still see your trains and make sure that nothing is stopped, you're like flowing weirdly. And this kind of does remind me again of Factorio here. The fact that you can kind of zoom out and just get more information at any level of zoom, which is quite nice. Because sometimes if you zoom in too much, let's change the time of day to evening again. Like, it's not perfectly clear what's going on, but you get good color coding at this distance. And this does actually look dangerously like Factorio. <laughs> they live dangerously. Anyway, so, um, let's get started on the quarry now. Ooh, we've also got this beautiful blur on the bottom of the screen, I'm starting to notice. I like that filter. Um, okay, so quarries make use of these mountains. You thought that these were just impassable objects. Uh, oh, au contraire, au contraire. Now, quarries are a little bit confusing, but they can be built on any of these, like... Oh no, it's just because I was out of wood why I had to do that. Actually, let's up our wood production a little bit more. Hang on, I'll be right back in a second. Okay, so what I've actually decided to do is just add two new trains to this route and completely expand the wood production. I am sending another proletariat train out, and here we go, here another wood route. I would really do recommend getting organized and color coding this stuff because I'm feeling so much better about this playthrough than my last one. Uh, in which nothing made any sense. Here we go, so we are loading and offloading wood, and we'll see if the flow here works out perfectly, but... Oh god, now we don't have enough workers. What is going on here? Well, as this starts to flow, good, we've got more trains going. So this means that we should be able to get more frequent pickups, and this is sort of like having a train schedule. My god, I rode trains for so many years. I went to train... I went to train school. No, I went to school on a train when I was in high school. Uh, so I just did an absurd amount of commuting. But yeah, you would always have these schedules, and this is where this kind of comes back to. Except these just sort of come whenever there's a train. But now we've got a, a goodly amount of, uh, wood. We just unlocked the 300 wood per minute milestone, which is actually an achievement. And my god, doesn't this look good, having all of this, like a, like a nice, fresh plank? I don't know, there's something about it. 
All right, um... All right, okay, let's go ahead and get the quarry going now, because we've just figured out all of our other, you know, crap. And we've got a good, good, nice flow of this coming in. As for the bricks, I have no idea how we're getting those bricks, but I'm just not going to question it for a moment. I haven't noticed that I've gotten completely locked at any situation. Like, I thought I would have to start over in some scenarios. Fortunately, that didn't happen to me. And it does look like we've got a goodly amount of room for the quarries here. I think I'm just going to kind of shoot this off as another station in this direction. Off of Chicago. Ooh, but we've also built this dangerously close to the warehouse as well. Um, ah, uh, alright, in that case, let's go, like, maybe here. Maybe we'll shoot it off this way. Yeah, that's good. And we'll build the quarry nice and far off over here in quarry land. There we go. Let's go ahead and get up another distribution center, just barely in range of that thing. And then runner. Actually, was that smart? It'll... Actually, I do want to take that back. It needs to be more in range of mountains. Now, we can always, again, we can always build and rebuild these types of things as time goes on, so don't get, like, too worried if something is not perfect. But, you know, it, it can be kind of a pain to rebuild everything again. Um, but, you know, that that's kind of what these games are about, is just trial and error. Do it all wrong the first time and then come back and have fun redoing it right the next time. But I did find that this game took me... I don't know, like, longer than I expected for me to get into it, but maybe it's because I hadn't played any transport sims before. Like, everyone keeps comparing it to Anno that I've heard. I never actually played the Anno games, uh, nor did I really have a, a young experience playing open TTD. Although I did play Roller Coaster Tycoon, so I guess that sort of counts. We've got an awkward mountain right here. I guess we'll lead this one into here. Here we go. Okay, so a little off-camera here. I've just set up the quarry. Uh, I've set it so that our worker train goes over here and then it drops people off at all other places. And remember, now we've got two of those things, but now we've sort of got a line of trains waiting to go into Chicago, so this is kind of a growing concern for me. I've tried to sort of make up for this with just a crap load of signals. Uh, you know, that'll work for a certain amount of time, but uh, later on I am going to start to have to get a little bit more, like, disciplined in what's going on here. We've also got this awkward, like, two trains with passengers that are right next to each other, so I want to keep that flow going better. But we'll let time go on. It shouldn't be too much of a problem for right now because we're still at max resources and it isn't preventing any construction. Anyway, the quarry uh, is doing well, but now I want to point out something because I was very confused when I got to the quarry stage when I was playing this on my own. So this produces regular stone. Now, what we need to do is take this stone, and if we want to create cut stone, we're going to need to get another train to bring it back to Chicago. And then in Chicago, they're going to cut the stone, and then we need to bring that cut stone back to the warehouse. So there's ways that we can transport, like, some cut stone in one car of the train and not in others but I think I'm just gonna keep everything to separate trains here because it's uh, to, it keeps things more separated and well laid out in my own mind and I, I think that's pretty good I got a lot of different presets here we could use the wood train for this but I'm just going to call it its entirely own preset because who knows if things are subject to change in the future so I'm gonna call this one raw stone uh, and this train is going to have... We could get the, a better locomotive soon, but we need to produce more cut stone for that. Let's go ahead and do coal tender. Uh, and cut... Now this is confusing me because flat wagons actually carry the cut stone. I tripped over this before. These need to be transported in the gondola wagon. Uh, so we'll go to the max, then remove that. And let's go ahead and build that. And then... We'll also make our cut stone train right here. So let's, oh, we're gonna go two for one here. Isn't that kind of crazy? All right, we're gonna take a risk. Cut stone, excuse me, train. And this is going to be an ST10 followed by coal tender followed by flat wagons. Now I won't make that mistake again. And I believe that's our max length. So we'll build that. Okay, and as for coloration, well, that's about the roots. So we still haven't even made these roots yet, so we need to make another two of these. 
We've kept it to a tastefully low number of roots, though, I think. Um, let's call this one raw stone delivery. I'll make this like a nice, kind of like a darker gray color. Yeah, let's do, just lower that hue, just lower the value a bit more. There we go, so grayish. And this is going to go from... Uh, gosh, we gotta go, we still gotta build some stuff in Chicago, but we're gonna go from the quarry to Chicago, or we'll go, f well, it'll refuel itself in Chicago anyway, so load at the quarry, unload at Chicago, and that's gonna be this train, so let's do the raw stone delivery, and we'll deploy that. Now, what this should do if we did it right, is just take that stone out of there. We're gonna follow it, let's just speed up time to the max. And we are starting to run into more train traffic here, but... Shouldn't really do anything at Chicago yet. Here we go, we're at the quarry. It's loading up at the quarry, good. And let's just make sure that... Well, it might not actually offload at Chicago yet. Because what I still have to do at Chicago is this. Um, do I have these stoneworks? So, production facility that refines stone into cut stone. Cut stone is needed to build advanced structures. Uh, so it does have some capacity, but I believe that we can link it up to one of those... Small storage zones, too. And we'll try to keep that within range of our train station. And our markets as well. Yeah, trying to keep everything in range of each other is kind of a challenge. And I, I found that I wanted things to have a little bit more range. Because it did start to feel a little awkward after a while. But I don't know, maybe I'm just bad at it. Stoneworks. Uh, we'll do like two stoneworks for here. And people should start working in there. Actually, I think we could do a max of five, right? Let's just link up all of these stone- link up all the damn stoneworks there. There we go. Oh, well, no, people in Chicago are become, beginning to become unhappy. Let's go ahead and plant some trees. That's fairly easy to just make Chicago happy again because, you know, you just invite the Chicago bulls and then they're happy again. I don't know why, but planting these trees that look exactly like all of the other trees for some reason makes them happier again. We don't really question it. I'll just get that up to a positive value again. I could do, like, parks and other stuff. Yeah, why not? Let's do one little park here and there. But a lot of these, I just want to fill in the little gaps with beauteous. Items of great beauteous. Uh, I don't know where I'm getting a little ambitious here in the description. Alright, anyway, we've got the stoneworks and we've got all that linked up. We're storing some stone. Okay, and then the stone train does seem to be dropping off raw stone. Good. That's nice to see. Chicago. Good job, Chicago. Uh, now, does it show me how much cut stone is in Chicago if I look down? Yeah, so we are- we're starting to fill up with cut stone because we have no way of getting it out of there. Now, I still kind of have yet to see if this flow is working perfectly. We'll probably need to expand our quarry, I'm guessing. Yeah, look at that sad, inactive quarry. But there's still people working in there. I just need more people working. Um... Here we go. Yeah, I'll drop off some people at that quarry. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and make sure that we're actually bringing back the cut stone first, and then we'll solve our quarry issue. So we're going to go ahead and create a cut stone route. So we have raw stone delivery. Let's do cut stone delivery. Uh, there we go again with all the letters. Cut stone delivery. And I guess we kind of want to differentiate this. We'll just make it like white, like a more kind of refined, chiseled looking stone color. Let's do that. Like a bright white, there we go. No saturation, just pure white. Okay, so then this one's gonna go from Chicago, and we wanna make sure we change this condition. So we gotta load, and we can also add on a filter. We'll say, make sure you just load on cut stone here. And then we go over to the warehouse and we unload. Um, so we'll call this cut stone delivery, and let's just deploy this. And every now and then, there's just something that you forget about and you do really stupidly, so just be prepared to make changes. It kind of feels like writing coding, you know what I mean? Like, if you've ever done any software engineering or something like that? Like, you just try to change one variable at a time and make sure you understand what's going on in the whole system. And voila, there we go, cut stone. I'm not sure if we're actually using cut stone for anything now. But, uh, we could probably start to get some bridges and other upkeep. Oh yeah, we are starting to use a little bit of it up. 
It's just nice to see that we're getting that, though. And in fact, we're going to have too much cut stone. Anyway, I could keep continuing this, but I think I'm going to leave a bookmark in it there because we've got all the main basic resources, and I've just been dying to try this game out. Uh, it's been on my desk for a while, so... Anyway, let me know what you think if you want to see more. Uh, Factorio combined with transport. Sweet transit. Go give it a try.